Um, my name's Lauren Berkowitz. I'm an installation artist and I predominantly work with ephemeral and uh, um, found materials. Um, I've been interested in creating installations and site-specific works over the last 20 or so years. I've been creating uh, immersive environments um, that people um, interact with and experience physically. And I've been interested in the passage of time and uh, our place with, within that. The work sustenance is very much about the changes and evolution within the Australian landscape and I, I've incorporated a lot of um, indigenous edible and medicinal um, plants within the work and I've also used a lot of um, introduced species which document the various waves of migration from Europe um, Middle East, uh, the Americas, Asia, and the kind of plants which have been brought to our shores by different migrants and have really changed and shaped our, our landscape. And I've also incorporated um, succulents, and not all of them are edible, some of them are medicinal, because um, I mean, as I look around, the basically everywhere you see succulents because they're the only things that are self-sustaining and can kind of cope with climate change. So in a sense this work um, does kind of look at the food plants, the changing food plants um, in the Australian landscape. I thought how in my work can I do something that um, is productive and, and can somehow help um, the environment in a positive way um, without being a grand gesture, just something quite small and humble. Um, so, you know, I like this idea of creating an indoor garden um, where I would get school children involved. When I did the original work, I, I um, did it at La Trobe Museum of Mart last year and my daughter's class was involved with um, doing plantings of seeds and a lot of the seeds that they planted were from a previous um, artwork called Cornucopia which was made up of, um, oh, I had alfalfa sprouts and I had um, mustard seeds, lentils, chickpeas, all these seeds I had in my um, in my studio and I thought what am I going to do with them and I thought I have to recycle them into another work so the kids did all these plantings at school and, and grew them over a month and then I incorporated them into my artwork. What we have here is um, Warrigal Greens uh, also known as New Zealand spinach. Uh, this was eaten by uh, the Aboriginal people prior to colonisation, but it was also eaten by the convicts as a source of iron. Uh, I've got here a vanilla lily. Unfortunately, it's not in flower, but uh, this has multiple tubers which were eaten um, raw or cooked by um, the Aboriginal people prior to settlement. This is a small Sydney bush orchid and this is the, the large Sydney um, bush orchid. Uh, this one has a, an edible tuber which was roasted and eaten. Uh, also the flour was eaten with um, other ingredients and when this flowers apparently it will have quite an intoxicating smell. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, the stems of the small Sydney bush orchid were beaten and chewed. Um, and up here I have the, uh, this is called pig face. 
And this has a flower that um, was sucked for its nectar and also these um, could be uh, eaten. They're quite fleshy leaves which are quite salty. It's also used as an Aboriginal medicine um, and the Sydney bush orchid tuber was also um, had medicinal qualities. It could be used for burns and on blisters and this is a good example of the tuber here. I've got kale, artichoke, fennel, parsley. Uh, in terms of succulents um, I have here uh, aloe vera which um, is used for healing wounds. So this theme of um, healing and repair is quite a dominant theme within this work and I'm interested in in the long-term kind of sustainability um, of the food and plants that we eat. I like that idea of a sculpture that was fully um, recyclable and sustainable on every level and that idea of giving something back to the community and that idea of trying in, in, in a very small way to make a difference um, to global warming, which is such an overwhelming kind of problem. And, you know, it made me think, how does um, an in individual kind of respond to such a vast problem? And if you can do something in a very small way, maybe th that's, that's a good thing. Um, and the idea of being um, self-sufficient and creating a veggie patch is a very positive gesture. The early 90s was a very important turning point in terms of my work practice and how I wanted to um, use materials and work with materials. We go from the plants which are producing oxygen to this huge walled structure which for me is very much like a set of lungs that breathe in and breathe out as you walk through the space. Uh, these are almost, each bag is almost like a tiny air filled sack that um, makes up the millions of little polyps that, that line the lungs. This work for me has um, a kind of surreal and dreamlike quality. Uh, it also has very strong associations with the interior of the human body. Uh, for some people it has a kind of womb-like quality to it. Um, and for others it can be quite a claustrophobic space. Also, you know, the use of white bags um, in Eastern religion, um, white has connotations of death. So, I mean, if you're looking at this work from an ecological point of view, um, I mean, all this waste and the mutation of waste that keeps on accumulating, um, you know, is choking our planet in a sense. So I kind of see this work as having multiple layered um, meanings and people can, you know, view it in many different ways and on different levels. And I kind of like that open-endedness to, to this work. This work has actually had many different incarnations. This is the largest it's actually been installed. The original piece is four by two metres. Uh, so I think on this scale, it's, it certainly has a far more kind of immersive quality and, you know, it is far more evocative and very strange kind of psychological space as well. I don't go out protesting, um, but I mean, in my quiet way, I, I hope that my work um, does convey some positive messages about, um, you know, things that people can do to try and reduce their waste. For example, with the plastic bags, I mean, after walking through that work um, and being overwhelmed with the excess of, of waste, um, hopefully people will think next time they go to the supermarket, I don't need another bag, I can bring my own bags. <laughs>